Hi there, it's Julie from This Beautiful Farm Life and I'm so glad you've joined me today. We are going to be making the most adorable little embossed lemon shortbread cookies with some lemon curd just in time for Easter. The shortbread has been one of my favorites for a really long time since way back in high school days when a friend introduced me to Scotch shortbread and we've made that for years but a number of years ago our oldest daughter got really into making things with lemon and she's always loved lemon and she came up with a really delicious lemon shortbread with lemon curd which I'd never had before and so now that's a staple in our house but for this little thing I tweaked the recipe because I wanted to be able to roll these cookies out with my new embossed roller this has um, butterflies and little swirls it's the pattern called spring I'll link it below so you can find it and I've been looking at these for a while but I was a little bit afraid to try them because I was afraid it just looked like everything would stick in them but I've been watching some little tutorials and reading and I think we're gonna make it work so these are the most darling little cookies we're gonna throw some sprinkles right into the dough so we don't have to frost them we can save having all that extra sugar that we don't really need um, and all the rest of these ingredients here today are from my favorite bulk food supply um, store, which is Azure Standard in Dufer, Oregon. And if you've not heard of Azure, be sure to hit my video on how I feed my family healthy food and stay on budget. And one of, a, one of the ways I do that is by buying my groceries through Azure. They have wonderful bulk, natural, organic, whole foods, and that's what we cook with, and they deliver them um, to a drop point near me. So today I'm using all of their ingredients. These are fresh lemons. I have einkorn flour. This is their unifying um, einkorn flour. They're Azure Market brand, actually, and um, it's, it's non-bleached flour it's a whole grain flour um, I wouldn't typically do a little delicate cookies with a whole grain flour sometimes I use an all-purpose einkorn but I'm out of all-purpose einkorn so we're just gonna make it work I don't like to use refined sugars so we use um, sucanat and we use coconut sugar so today I'm using coconut sugar um, it calls for powdered sugar and since you can't get good powdered sugar um, I'm going to put this in the blender and if you want to know how easy that is, there'll be a little clip at the end of this video showing you how. And I'm just going to powder that up. And then we have a little salt, a little lemon extract. This is the, the pure organic lemon extract from Azure. Um, <clears throat> an egg, which actually is from our own chickens, but Azure has great eggs as well. And then um, in order to um, do my rolling pin to keep it from sticking, I'm using their avocado spray, which we love. Um, takes high heat if you're, if you're um, doing anything high heat. It's great to use in muffin tins and things like that. So this is the ingredients. I'm gonna make up that dough. Everybody pretty much knows how to make dough, and I'm gonna show you how I roll it out. That's the exciting part. And then, well, that took a little longer than expected to mix up this flour because I couldn't use my Bosch mixer because it was a little too big for this amount of dough and I tried to use my hand mixer and it died so guess what I got out my really handy uh, dough tool and it mixed the cookies up slick as a whistle so I think this is a better method it didn't take long and I have only one dish to wash I love it <clears throat> so now that it's mixed I need to put my sprinkles in and I want to put those in with my hands. I just want to work them in gently because I don't want to um, smash them. So even if you're using a mixer, don't use the mixer for this part. Just um, work them in with your hands. So here's my sprinkles. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to kind of knead it into the dough. Oh, it's going to be darling. I was kind of afraid that with the dark um, dough, it wouldn't show. But I think it's going to show just great. That looks good and you can see that this dough is not it's really moist but it's not sticking to my hands really bad and that's what we need in order to have it roll well um, it doesn't you need to not have it be sticking with your hands so so we're gonna roll this up in saran wrap and put it in the fridge now you can see that this is pretty brown dough because of both the coconut 
um, sugar and the whole wheat flour. So I think just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up another batch with white flour and white sugar, white powdered sugar, just so you can see the difference and then we'll roll them both out and see what we think. Okay, we're back. We can see the difference and how they look. One is much prettier uh, dough for this fancy little cookie. And if, you know, if it's just a special occasion, sometimes we do use a little bit of white flour and a little bit of regular sugar um, on holidays. But um, oftentimes I've found that if I try it with the more healthy ingredients, um, we enjoy it just as well. And it's much better for us to have a little snack like this than a snack like that. So we're gonna try rolling it out now and using this new embossing roller. Okay, so I have a nice um, flour, not too heavily floured surface. Um, I have half the dough that I made. And the first thing I'm going to do is make this into kind of a log shape because this roller is not very wide. I don't want to have to re-roll it. So I want to be able to roll as much of this into one um, roll as I can. So first I'm going to use my regular French pin. If you have never used a French pin, and it's an amazing uh, rolling pin. Um, and I will link one below because I use it for everything with this tapered end. You can roll around the edges of pie crusts and um, it, it works really fabulously. So, so first I'm gonna roll it out with that. So it says to roll it to quarter inch thickness, but I found with my trial and error that if I did it quarter inch the first time, when I pressed so hard with this, it got fairly thin. So I give it just a hair more than a quarter inch. And then, um, this is really well oiled. I've oiled it up with my um, avocado spray really well in all of the crevices so that the dough will come right back out. I did find that once it's nice and oiled, you don't want to set it in your flour because it will immediately fill those holes with flour and I had to do a little bit of um, digging it out because I set it down in the flour. So th the, the first part is um, you want to press with really good pressure to make a nice deep imprint so it doesn't cook out. And then the very beginning, go very slowly as you go because it's going to want to stick at the beginning and we're going to unstick it and then just keep on rolling. Firm pressure. my hands up on the rolling pin to give more pressure. The deeper your imprints, the more they will stay in when you bake it. And there you go. Isn't that awesome? And there's nothing in here except for where I bumped it with the flour again on the way off. So it might be worth um, scooting that flour out of the way. Now we're just gonna cut out some cookies. There's one. How cute is that? So, and you can see a little bit of the color. Now this is brown. We'll do some more with the white flour so you can see the difference. Um, this was done with the whole grain einkorn and the coconut sugar. Um, but well, I think it's going to be cute anyway. Okay, let's do the white flour, white sugar version. Okay. Got that about the right thickness. I just re-oiled, um, sprayed my rolling pin once more. Putting on very firm pressure.
one of the things I really like about this is that um, this is so pretty like it is that we don't need to frost it. And that just is less sugar, less hassle, um, just makes it so simple. Put them on a little tray and they look beautiful just like they are. So now you want to put those on a tray and you want to put them into either the freezer for 10 minutes or back in the fridge for up to 30 minutes so that that little design will get really firm into the cookie and not melt out. And then of course the cooking time is fairly short baking time. The shorter the baking time uh, you can do, the less that will melt out as well. So we're going to put these into the freezer for 10 minutes before we bake them. And then we're going to bake them at 375 for five to seven minutes. So a very short baking time. Um, if you enjoyed this little tutorial and you wanna come back and see more and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. You can come back and join me again here in the farmer house each week when I have new videos out about nourishing food, wholesome living, and simple farmhouse beauty. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.